Hello. Uh, today I'm here to uh, talk to you guys about midi chlorians. I found this blog some time ago called the Star Wars Heresies uh, by Paul F. McDonald. There are certain parts in this blog that are grayed and um, go to other links so if you want to read this and check it out you can but otherwise I will begin reading this to you guys um, access here so yeah. why mid chlorine is better that's the title of it, uh, this uh, blog at least this entry um, so I was listening to the modern scholar series it's a really good idea this lecture series where top professors in their field pontificate on a number of subjects. I have found, however, that the execution is somewhat lacking. For instance, one professor, while outlining the basic work of literature, used the verb tense hung when he should have pronounced used hung. Worse still, he attributed the quote to Percy Shelley, which actually drifted from the pen of William Blake. But even worse yet, I made the plunge into the study of study of science fiction. I thought it might be an interest. They might have some interesting things to say about Doom, which was of the main topic on one of the discs. Well, quite naturally, the professor professor mentioned Star Wars in the introduction. After rightly arguing that it was hard to, that it wasn't hard science fiction, he began to make erroneous comments. One that really sticks to mind is that the lightsaber is simply a tool in a galaxy far, far away, something as common as a lawnmower. Whatever. There are also a couple of observations that fell flat. Of course, the professor couldn't stop there. He remarked on the use of the science fiction, of the science of science fiction, particularly citing many chlorines as George Lucas's attempt to ruin his own franchise by turning the force into some kind of blood disease or some such. I blocked the main quote from memory. So, yes, the guy allegedly, one of the top minds of, in his field, and this is what he has to say about the wars. Not that this isn't common, the confusion has erupted across the phantom, or fandom. From the inclusion of many chlorines in the Phantom Menace is being still being felt today. Outraged everyone from this professor to Simon Pegg. The force is, was ruined, they said. No longer was it a nice mystical energy field created of all things but pointless biological microscopic organisms in the blood. How anyone even this, or even his most vocal, hateful opponents could believe George Lucas could be so achingly stupid is hard to believe. Though that this is the prevailing sentiment. At Celebration 6, apparently, Seth Green and other creators of Star Wars Detours were joking with George Lucas about how he hated the middies. <clears throat> And that was when Lucas apparently launched into a brilliant half an hour long philosophical explanation of them. Word on the street is everyone in prison came out of loving the Medichlorians. This only makes sense. After all, they've been part of Lucas's notes on the saga since the 70s. And it's been canon ever since the original trilogy that the Force is. Billy is in fact passed down through bloodlines. The notion is that here is horror of horrors is an actual biological connection. The biological connection lines up perfectly. But so many people wandered out of the theaters, utterly dumbfounded in ninety nine. Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna post a few pages from my upcoming book around that sent around clarifying and exploring these little microscopic buggers. And I'll hope 
I'll just hope to against hope that this helps well the, all the or the haters a bit. <clears throat> this is from chapter two of the symbi symbiosis. Sorry, I can't seem to be able to talk today, but I'll get on apparently on some. I need to keep clearing my throat. So the theme of symbiosis is clear or has been briefly examined in a galactic planetary cultural and character level, but it still goes deeper. In ethics, the Dalai Lama states that when the lens of symbiosis is taken up, we begin to see that the universe we inhabit can be understood in terms of living organism, which, or where each cell works in the balanced co corruption, whether every other cell to sustain the whole. For our purpose here, the living force is the organism uniting the galaxy. And yes, it, it, as the Dalai Lama himself said, that extends to the cellular level. To me, this makes perfect common sense. Yet one of the most hotly contested elements in the Phantom Menace was the inclusion of many chlorians, the tiny microscopic organisms that allow Jedi to commune with the Force. Of course, there seems to be an extraordinary amount of confusion regarding what many chlorians even are. And explicably, many walked out of the theater believing that the Force was no longer a mystical energy field created by all living things, but some sort of weird blood disease. Never mind that this was never stated, discussed, or even alluded to in the film or the script. Instead, of, aside from it portraying the Maverick Jedi Master, Qui Gon Jinn, Liam Neeson seemed to be having, or was seemed to be troubled with the concept, though he did ask the director about it. He said that we all have thousands of bacteria in our new systems. Suppose a particular strain had a life force that connected to the universe. And what if some people had a stronger strain of those bacteria that others did? Nixon recounted, adding, I thought the idea was both, was both fascinating and believable. <clears throat> the key word here is connected, both literally and thematically. As his fictional counterpart advises young Anakin, without midichlorians, life could not exist, and we would have no knowledge of the Force. They could speak to you, telling you the will of the Force. Very clearly, the film states that without midichlorians, we would have no knowledge of the Force. At no point does anyone say without midichlorians, the Force would not exist, only that no one would be connected to it. Likewise, many chlorians speak to the Jedi, telling them the will of the Force. If the Force and the many chlorians were the same thing, Qui-Gon would have said that they tell us their will as they are in the, as in the possessive. At no point are the two said to be identical or interchangeable. The many chlorians are just the, uh, the intent of this. The antennas that pick up the signal of the force, as simple as that. Yet, given the amount of incomprehensibility those little guys have produced, I'll step aside and let George Lucas himself explain them, and then round out their theme. In a 2005 Vanity Fair interview, he conveniently launched into nothing short of a soliloquy on it. That means that between the Force, uh, which is sort of a life force, and reality, the connectors between these two things are what we call midichlorians. They are the bait based on midichlorii, which are completely different species, a different animal that live inside every single cell and allow it to live allow it to reproduce, allow life to exist. They also, in their own way, communicate to the with the Force itself. 
<clears throat> the more you have, the more your cells are able to speak intuitively with the force itself and use the powers of the force. Of course, many vehemently object to the force having any connection to the material biological world at all. As Yoda waxed poetic in the Empire Strikes Back, luminous beings we are, not this crude matter. Unfortunately, our green ma little green master seemed to have momentarily forgotten that the Force is the offspring of the material world. Physical life is the root of it, the thing that causes it to grow and expand. Not biological galaxy means no luminous energy, and this has been part of Star Wars canon since the beginning. Conveniently, there is a fabulous article in Star Wars and philosophy that delves into this while discussing environmental ethics. Elizabeth F. Cook of Creighton University cleverly shot or shoot, shoots down the mind-body and atomic antagonism of some of have seen in the saga. Establishing Yoda's oft-quoted line as part of the picture, Cook writes the, how the living force isn't so much the mind-over-matter picture as one would mind and matter reciting as two parts of a whole. A Jedi Padawan's task is to become more in touch with the physical world by being more at one with the Force. A task achieved through physical and mental training. A Jedi must learn to feel the Force rather than just think about it. This also fundamentally ties in with fact that every species with close harmonious ties to the physical world, being the Gungans, Wookiees, or Ewoks, are inadvertently shown in the positive light. In their own way, they are bound in the life of the Force as the Jedi. As Cook explains, they work with nature to defend nature. And nature is one with a force. Contrary to popular understanding, not every spirituality is predicted on the eternal war between religion and science, much less spirit and matter. This culturally this is a culturally oddity that Lucas is clearly trying to rectify with the inclusion of many Koreans. Like that neutral or neural pathways in the brain. Medicorians are conducts the conductance, the bridge connecting spirit and flesh to create a greater whole. Clearly there has to be some kind of biological component at work. Which is why the force is inherently or at least stronger in certain families than others. The only reason anyone knows that the four spirits is because Minotaurians matter. The independence is something science is discovering as well, with scientists increasingly realizing that astronomy to quantum physics that no single part is isolated and separate from the whole. In the life on, of Earth, portrait of a beautiful, middle-aged, stressed-out world, Stanley R. Rice wonderfully illustrates how symbiont, uh, symbiont circles operate. Much of subsequent biography of Earth consists of cell merging process that they already had, producing complexity from primordially simple parts. 
by joining together, each of them benefited from the other. They formed partnerships that accomplished things that neither could do alone. This, symbi this symbiosis, the close co cooperation and other, and perhaps even fusion of more than uh, one species into a cooperative unit, it is symbiosis that transformed Earth from broth of simple cells into everything it is today. That's the beautiful thing. And it is arguably the central theme of Star Wars. Again, nothing is changing on any level whatsoever because besides the size of scale. Some objective to young Obi-Wan Kenobi using the microscope aboard the Queen's ship to study midichlorians at all, but they might as well object to Luke Skywalker sighting Tusken Raiders from afar with his mi micro binoculars in A New Hope. Whether reality is seen from under a microscope or through a telescope, nothing is changing but level of magnification. To object to midichlorians is really to object to force users themselves, since the former is merely a microscopic view of the latter. Or another way to put it, is a Je Jedi connect, communicate, and use the force in the larger body of the galaxy, so many chlorines channel and use the force in the larger body of the Jedi. Again, nothing has been altered or rewritten except the size scale. And there you have it. Uh, again, I apologize for fumbling and whatnot, but apparently I'm not really able to talk today. Um, but yeah, I will uh, leave this in the description for you all to read. Uh, written by Paul F. MacDonald. Yeah, interesting read. I uh, found out about this some time ago, and um, uh, I enjoyed it. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know. I didn't think about really making a video about it, um, though until recently with the Medichlorians, and I recall re reading, or reading this, and then rereading it, I, like, you know, since I kind of wanted to do a video about many Korean's, uh, not too long, it kind of sparked my mind at the beginning of the month, but didn't really think about it until um, lately. And then I remembered this blog, so I thought, I'll just read the blog, because it really has everything I could say and more. Um, one thing I will say, uh, he did say he had, uh, had uh, George Lucas had this in, uh, uh, written down since the 70s. Uh, he actually even gave an interview in 77 about the Force and said it was like about Mighty Clorins and gave a brief synopsis about it. Essentially everything they just said here. Um, but yeah, uh, so even far as back as the 70s, Lucas has been talking about Mighty Clorins being the thing that is able to connect people with the Force. You know, many clones are in everywhere and everything, yet those with a higher mini clone account are able to use it. That's what separates a Luke Skywalker from a Han Solo. Because otherwise, why can Luke use the Force, but Han can't? Well, Anakin Skywalker was Luke's father, as well as the father of Leia, and Luke became a Jedi and was able to harness and use the for power of the Force, where we're never really given any clue now in the new films as to if Leia ever did, except she used the Force to float or fly through space to get back to the ship she was born out of, which was 
because no backstory was ever given on such a, on such a topic of Leia ever being able to use the Force. She just felt presence and stuff, like the presence of people and communication. That's really seemed to be all we got. But yeah, enough of that little talk. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, and if you have any suggestions on Star Wars related, since I enjoy Star Wars a lot, uh, just let me know, and uh, I'll look into to it or talk about it or whatever. Um, again, I'll probably talk about something else later in the week. Another movie. Not entirely sure yet of what, but I thought, hey, this is going to be a fun little prompt to video. Why not make it? And, uh, yeah. Fairly easy. Just reading. Though, again, I did st uh, stumble and mispronounce some words. My throat was needing to be cleared. And I apologize, but uh, I think I think it went well, pretty much. Uh, so again, uh, I'll see you next time. Any suggestions? Let me know. Okay. Until next time, I'll see you all.